So uh, that's all going to be worked out as we go along. It's actually uh, 734, so um, I guess we could open our meeting. Um, Do you want me to read the statement regarding remote participation? I think we, I, I think we need to do the remote participation. I mean, okay. um, I okay. so. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's so March. abbreviated version? <coughs> I go ahead. Don't think I do. Okay, that's okay. sorry. <laughs> Pursuant to Governor Baker's March twelfth, twenty twenty orders. No, I mean, orders. we'll preface it. Though. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Pursuant to Governor Baker's Continue. March twelfth, twenty twenty order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, um, general laws, chapter thirty a, section eighteen, and the governor's March fifteenth, twenty twenty order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the North Reading Community Planning Commission is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so by visiting uh, https colon slash slash uso2web.zoom.us slash j slash 985-430-0926 or by calling in 1-301-715-8592 meeting code 985-430-0926. And this meeting is being recorded. And David okay, thank you. So, um, you got David? Yep. Ah, we go. There we go. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this evening we do have an officer reorganization that, but since we're not going to have Ryan till later on, um, and I actually thought we might want to wait until a, 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 you know, we could meet in person, which I thought was going to be the 15th, but perhaps not. So I guess we can. Um, handle that whenever, but probably to, at the end of the meeting, we give Ryan a chance to be here as well. Sure. Um, okay, so um, we we have a continued public hearing for eight o'clock, which is a little ways off. So perhaps we could start with if this River Water Association discussion um, uh, would be by law review. So uh, let me just go to that. And uh, Sadie and is here. Hi, that's me. Okay. Where are my guys? Okay. Um, yeah, let me just uh, just let me just repeat that if if, if uh, people didn't hear it, this meeting is being recorded before we start the meeting. So, so um, so Sadie, you have a uh, a uh, uh, you're looking at doing some of those uh, bylaws with uh, with the Mass Audubon Society. Yes. Um, so yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sadie. Um, I'm a college student working with Patrick Lynch. Some of you may know him um, at Ipswich River Watershed Association. Um, and I'm just here to let you guys know about um, a training opportunity with Mass Audubon uh, that's going to be happening soon. Um, so this year, Mass Audubon is working with the Ipswich River Watershed Association to uh, bring their bylaw review training program to the North Shore. So the training program is free for all Greenscapes municipal members and it's part of our ongoing efforts to help um, various planning boards, conservation commissions and other town boards and staff review and revise bylaws um, and regulations to promote low impact development. Uh, so we're currently finalizing the date and time for um, the introductory webinar, which will take place sometime in late June. And Mass Audubon will also be fin finalizing its new curriculum for launch sometime in September. Um, something that's really helpful for us to know in advance and part of why I'm here today uh, is to ask um, which, if any, local bylaws or regulations the planning board would prioritize trying to review. Um, Mass Audubon's bylaw review tool is really comprehensive and covers just about everything. Um, any bylaws. Um, so the Ipswich River Watershed Association has received a grant from Essex County Community Foundation's Land and Environment Initiative to provide initial, uh, additional one-on-one -on -one assistance for any towns who agree to participate in the training program. And this one-on-one uh, -on -one help can prioritize which bylaws um, or regulations you want to review and revise first. Um, 
So uh, since I'm a relatively new staff member at IRWA, um, I can do my best to answer any questions that you guys have, um, but otherwise I can write down any questions and get back to you later on. Um, so if anyone has any questions about the training, um, just let me know. I can also put my email in the chat as well as um, my um, colleague Patrick's email. Um, <coughs> Anything later? Sure. Well, thank you, Sadie. But I, I do have a, one quick question. Um, what, what is the, uh, what does it entail? What does the training entail? What are you trying to, other than, other than I do understand about low impact development and so forth. But, but what else is it, is there? Um, so it's pretty much just a training about how to use Mass Audubon's bylaw review tool. Um, and they want to get it. Um, Mass Audubon wants to get their tool um, really widespread throughout um, towns in Massachusetts. Um, and so they're just holding a training for anyone who needs help learning how to use the tool. Um, and it'll help um, town staff um, make their make their bylaws and regulations more um, sustainable. So that's that's the main goal. Of the so do you have any examples of that? You know, of what you mean by that? Like, what are some of the, what are the positions, if you will, of Mass Audubon? Um, if there's any ones that they use kind of as bullets that they see towns doing that they'd like to see done differently? Um, I'm not too sure, but um, I can drop a link to um, a description of the tool. Okay. Um, and they're mostly just um, trying to encourage nature-based solutions. So the main yeah. thing is ID. Um, but um, anyways, there's the link if anyone is interested in reading more about it. Um, but yeah, um, the main goal is to try to um, change um, like um, development bylaws and regulations to make new development more sustainable and less um, like have less of an impact on like the town's water, water supply, so. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so you are. It says you're you're looking for to partner with some of the uh, boards, so planning board people. So uh, so that would be something that when when is this training to going to happen? Um. There's a webinar about the training happening sometime in late June. We're not exactly sure yet, but um, we can definitely reach out when we have an exact date, and we believe the training will be happening sometime in September. Um, okay. So well, if you were to uh, make sure that we have it, make sure Danielle gets uh, gets updated as to when the when it opens up and when and as much about the training as possible. We'll see if we can, uh, one of us or some of us might get in. Sounds great. Okay. All right. Well, thank you thank very much. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Bye. Yep. Thank you. Okay. You got three minutes before you can go to uh, 200 River Park. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, Taskmaster, Chris. Oh, I'm just looking at, I, I have the agenda up here. You're so. good. You know, you know, oh, good. Don't, don't, you know, I, I kind of depend on him for some of this. I know. I was you just going to say, we need you. you. <laughs> Drive hey, the bus, Chris. He, he's got to run the meeting. He's not supposed to be looking at. Yeah. What's coming up next? Yeah, he does a good uh, job yeah. of keeping things squared away for us. So I get, I get no complaints. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Well, wait a minute. Let me go back to this and uh, back to this. I got the share file on my iPad here, so. Um, okay. Looking at uh, timing here. Elias. Oh, there he is. Yes, Boston oh, yeah. behind him tonight. Hey, Taylor. Good evening.
Yeah, I'm waiting for this to uh, bring my agenda up for timing here. 7.45 yeah, okay. and one. Yeah, okay, so, uh, all right. Well, I'm gonna not let it search anymore. You got half a minute. Okay. Um, hmm. All right. Um, so, uh, 200 River Park site plan review. Um, DC, DCI has issued a final approval of the stormwater drainage. No outstanding issues remain. A draft conditional report, draft conditional approval is in the share file. Um, Mr. Dowdy, would you like to present there? Hi, uh, again, Taylor Dowdy with DSC Group um, for the record. Um, I, I, don't, I don't believe there's much of anything left to present. Um, if, uh, I spoke with uh, Danielle earlier today. And if I'm not mistaken, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, was, I thought the public hearing portion closed uh, during the last meeting. So I'm not 100% 100 sure if I should um, you know, really offer much more testimony, I guess is the best way to put it. I yeah, I just uh, wanted to know, basically what we, gen what we generally do is we provide you with a copy of the conditional approval. Okay. And so your comments with an acceptance or not acceptance of the conditional approval is what we're looking for right now. If I you have you. any issues with it or if you, in fact, are in agreement with it. I, I do not have any issues. I have passed this on to Takeda and, and the rest of their team there. Um, in fact, they're, they are on this Zoom call right now. Um, and they have not indicated that they have any issues uh, with the approval. Okay, from the board, any comments or questions for this at this point? No, I think they uh, followed our uh, informal meeting very well and uh, turned out uh, what we were looking for. They came with their ideas, we gave them our ideas and we got a, a good package at the end. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, um, I don't see anything else. So, um, Mr. Pierce, we have a yes, Mr. Hayden, please. I have a motion if you so please. I will accept the motion. Thank you, sir. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to approve the plan entitled GMP Warehouse Master Plan 200 River Park Drive, North Reading, Massachusetts, drawn by BSC Group dated April 5th, 2021, as amended this evening. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say, uh, well, actually, I don't have to do roll call. I'm sorry, I'm gonna do roll call request for the votes. Mr. Redloff. Aye. Mr. Hayden. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. And myself is aye. So let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Mr. Carroll is not with us right now. And there is your vote, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, you. thank you for- Thank you, thank you Taylor. And taking care of things. Absolutely, thank you very much. Have a good thank night. You. you too. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's see if my agenda will come up this time. Here we go. Uh, okay, so we have a few minutes before our next one. Um, let's do the bond release for Long Hill Lane. Chris, do you have a, you, you got a motion? I do. I got just a question on that, and this is just more, um, I don't really have a huge objection, but with the just the uh, agreement to go with the, or release the bond for the 64, leaving the 5K, and, and then on page five, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, it lists all kind of the, you know, the itemized list of the bond itself. Do we at least have confirmation that these things were done? I mean, again, we don't have an as-built plan to 
see if they were, but I'm assuming someone's inspected this, you know, so. Yeah, we're, we're holding, we owe money for the ads bill, so. Um, we do actually have an as built and it was um, it was reviewed by the town engineer. So that's confirmed to have everything complete. Okay, so there's no that memo here that says we're, we're holding the five. We don't need to hold the five anymore. Or this was back that's from right. September. I see this is we're releasing just the five. Right, it was that was like the site opening portion because I oh, think we had already I didn't even look at the, the And I apologize. Month. I didn't even look at the date. So I apologize to everybody. I just saw that's the okay. larger. <laughs> And then saw the five yeah, K, and I just yeah, wanted to make sure it was done. My mistake. I apologize. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Mr. go Pierce. ahead, Chris. Please. Mr. Pierce, I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to release all remaining funds for the bond being held for Long Hill Lane subdivision, as all work is now complete. A second. That motion. Do I have a second? I have a second by Mr. Redloff. Any further comments or questions on it? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, Mr. Hayden. Aye. Mr. Rudloff. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. And myself is aye. So uh, that's four in favor, no opposed. Um, the motion is carried. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what time we got? 750, we still got 10 minutes. Um, do we, um, we want to talk, want to do the 35 Main Street minor modification. I, I'm not sure how far that's going to go, but uh, um, I'm a little, I'm not sure how I feel about it just at this moment. <laughs> so do we have a presentation on that or? Um, Mr. Hall is here, if you would like to. Um... Okay, for 35 Main Street. Uh, are you, are you, now you, now you're muted, John. Now you, no, you're muted. You're muted. Unmute yourself, John. There you go. Now try. No, we can't Maybe turn you. your volume up. We cannot hear you, no microphone. Hmm. Do you want to try to call in? You might have to go back and join with audio. Yeah, might we're be not hearing anything. <laughs> He's going to have to come back in and join with us. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's off the table for a little while. Uh, Habitat for Humanity, that discussion. What is there a, something that we wanted to talk about on that? You know what? Not really. I just wanted to give a really quick update. There's not much to update. I just wanted to okay. um, just let you know I, that I reached out to the Housing Services Office um, to request if they could help us to put together an RFP and, um, you know, just you know, let uh, the town administrator know that that was something we were considering doing and um, just wanted to make sure that if an, if we were going to maybe try to target October town meeting that we probably would want to have a discussion with the select board soon. Um, and uh, the town administrator had uh, suggested maybe even, you know, June 21st might not be a bad time to, uh, to, to discuss that with them. But I am also still waiting for, um, Habitat to get back to me as far as confirming what properties they're actually interested in. So that's still nothing has moved too far, but I just wanted to put it on the agenda in case I had more of an update for tonight. Um, but it's I guess it's 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 pretty brief. But I'll let you know um, as things start moving with that, and if we do um, end up wanting to attend the select board meeting on the twenty first, in case they are you know ready to talk about that. So, well, we're, so we're going to provide them with a list of properties. And they're going to go through a list, a list of properties that we have decided would be useful for this purpose. And they're going to pick through them and pick ones that they think they can work with. Yeah, I mean, based but, on our you know, discussion, 
at the last meeting, I think they had it down to uh, four properties and they may be interested in all of them. So it was the two on Oakdale, the one on Haverhill and uh, the one at the end of St. Teresa's Street, I think are their final ones that they're thinking about. Um, but their engineer still has to kind of review to make sure they're interested in the bigger properties or the ones that can be put together. Um, they're interested in between three and five units. So, um, but they still need to go over it themselves and figure out which okay. of those they're interested in. So, so we're, we're um, just to clarify a couple things. We're, we're going to gift them these properties basically in order to build housing. That would be or the idea. Yeah, that would be the idea. So I mean, we, we would do an RFP. And, and, go ahead. We, we would do an RFP for the disposition, but it would be, I mean, the idea would be um, the, the donation of the land. Um, so it wouldn't be for so you know, purposes of getting. If we do an RFP mm -hmm. and and um, somebody comes along and says, oh, I want to build a 40, I'll build a 40B there and I'll also give you $100,000 for the land. Do they get it as opposed, if they're, if they're willing to build what we want built there, as opposed to um, us gifting it to have it? How does an RFP work if it's really a no competition situation? So it's not, um, it would not be set up so that it would be the highest bidder. It would be set up so that we are very clear about what our goals are. And if our goals are to, you know, donate the property um, and to donate it to an organization that involves, um, you know, volunteer labor for construction. Um, and there are, you know, a maximum of say three to five units, um, you know, the, we, we structure the RFP that way. And, and honestly, if we okay, got so other proposals and we didn't like them, we, you know, we would have the right to not not take not any take of them. them. Um, yeah. So it would okay, be set up so, so that it wasn't a maximum, you know, a highest bid. Yeah, that was the question I had because we obviously we have to couch the terms in the, in the RFP to direct it towards the Habitat for Humanity or some other, if there is another organization that would, that would work in a similar fashion. But I'm familiar with Habitat. They do a great job and, and they, um, they're very dedicated to what they do. And they do get a lot of volunteer help from all over the place. So, so, um, but I was just concerned that we would put an RFP out and somebody wants some, you know, developer might I, see if those housing is such a high value right now. Some developer might see it and say, I'll meet all those demands and then have it. Well, that would mean, them. I'm sure one of the demands, Warren, is going to be it's 100% affordable because that's what they're going to make yeah. and they're going to they're going to deed them yeah. in perpetuity. So right. I, I don't know what developer is going to come up and, and throw their hat in the ring for that one. They got to make yeah, some that's money. A fair point. You know, the okay. only the only ones that may may be able to do that would be a nonprofit. Yeah. Which, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. As far as I'm concerned, if they if if they're going to do 100 percent and it's going to be within these numbers, you know, but. Yeah. You know, we're not looking. We're not looking to make any money. We're looking for the good, you know, a good. Uh, that's right. Well, that's, that's what Habitat's all about. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. I've worked on them too. So, yes, yes. <clears throat> all right. Um, okay. So you all set that, Danielle. We we obviously are you know, on board with this. So. Yeah, just a real brief update. I'll let, I'll make sure I update you as soon as I have any more information. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's a good. Um, it's a good thing, and, and uh, all over the country, there are places, especially down the south, there's a lot of work that the Habitat does, because yeah. they have access to a lot of property down there, so they're able to do build build a lot of houses, build a lot of things, so. Um, all right. Um, okay. Uh, I think John is back in. Pardon? I think John is back in. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Oh, there, you go. there he is. Okay. <laughs> can you hear me this time? Now we can hear you. Hey. All right. Thanks. So uh, I don't know if you want me to start, but I know Danielle was nice enough to send the board out uh, a memo and I, a letter that I wrote about 35 Main Street, uh, which is right. North Reading Storage Solutions which we had previously approved back in May of 2017 for self-storage and seven 800 square foot retail spaces. And uh, mm -hmm. so we've got that site plan approved back in May of 2017. Since then, we haven't been able to rent 
any of the retail spaces out front. We've hired the uh, broker that knows the area with Atlantic uh, Real Estate and uh, had a listing with them for almost two years now. And the only unit that's taken is actually for our self-storage uh, office. And the other six units are just vacant. Um, so at the time of our, of our approvals, we came through, we, uh, the, the board was hoping to get a mixed use facility or site. And we agreed to that, put in the retail and unfortunately it just hasn't worked out. Um, there isn't the demand for retail in North Reading that we thought there was. And there's another building two lots down, I believe that has four or five empty retail spots as well. Um, so we're coming back looking for some relief and to make a minor site plan revision. Mr. Pierce. Mr. Hayden. So I understand what you're saying, John. Um, we approved you in May of 17. I don't think you opened your, those units were available for uh, occupation until late 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we opened July of 2019, but we started marketing them four or five months before. Right. The and, actually you know, and I, I understand that. But and then we got a year of nobody's going anywhere and places were closing. So, um, you know, I just like to see it going a little bit longer. And uh, hopefully with all the new stuff that's coming up right now, people are going to start either growing their businesses and need at a bigger place or opening new ones. And uh, the guy next door to you, he didn't even have his water in until last spring, I think, yeah, when I he no could get back at it. Yeah, he I didn't just... have a curb cut. You know, he had a whole bunch of problems going on. I don't know what it was, but. I don't know um, either. I just drive by and I see. Maybe right. No, I see it empty too. But yeah, he was definitely wasn't able to get anybody in there until in the middle of the pandemic. So, um, and I thought he, from what I had heard, he had actually had stuff rented out there originally, and he must have lost it because of, of that lateness. But I just like to see you hold on a little longer. I don't think you've filled up the entire uh, your entire storage building yet, have you? No, we just uh, completed the third floor back in February or March, beginning of some in March. So we've completed the, the storage portion of the project already. Obviously, it's still, you know, we still have plenty of vacancies, but we figured we didn't know, you know, how long it would go if even if we were to, you know, reduce the number of retail stores that would help, um, you know, because we, you know, the concept of having the retail, we weren't opposed to it because it brings people to the site. So they're familiar with us for our storage location. And, you know, you don't wake up on a Saturday morning saying, hey, honey, let's go look at self storage units today. It's real fun. <laughs> so basically, you know, you just want to be ready for when people have the need, and, you know, they might have gone there for, you know, we were thinking like a phone, you know, a, some type of cell or phone company, a realtor, an attorney's office, something like that would, would, you know, utilize that space. And we just haven't had any luck signing anyone on the dotted line. There's a lot of tire kickers that, oh, yeah, 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 I'm interested, interested, and then fade away for one reason or another. Yeah, I haven't, well, uh, I, uh, I understand what you're question. saying. <laughs> well, a question I would have is, I, you know, the real estate agent I'm, I'm assuming has you competitively priced. In other words, you're not, you're not priced out of the market and, and uh, have, you know, looking. No, because we, we've had people come back to us and we've lowered the, the going rate for what we're looking for a strip for per square foot and it still hasn't worked out for one reason or another. Not from a lack of trying. He's brought probably 12, 14 people. Well, I understand through. that. I, I do, uh, I, I do um, uh, and I do know, and I was saying earlier that this, this has been a tough, this has been a tough market for an, any number of reasons where uh, other people who have tried to build um, retail space have had difficulty finding takers, but but um, again, it's, it's most of what I've heard is, is recent, in other words, within the last two years. So, um, um, and a couple of people I know that had uh, plans on building properties with 
uh, mixed use, kind of put those plans on the back burner. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think there is an issue, but I'm not sure that it's a long-term issue. And I think that's what Chris was getting at, um, that it might not necessarily be a, a really long-term issue. And if you're not, and, and that's why his, question, his line of questioning was, are you, do, do you need the space right now? In other words, are you out of space to put people in? You're nope, clearly we're not. not. You clearly are not. So um, I'm going to propose maybe a, a six-month moratorium and come back in six months and let's see what's happening. And if you're still in dire straits there, I, 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 I think we might take another look at it. What do you think of that, Chris? Yeah, no, I that that's kind of what I was thinking of. Let's just okay. keep it going a little longer. And I'm not totally opposed to it. And I will say that uh, my wife has rented a, one of your units because we had a we had to move my mother in law's possessions quickly. And I was we were in another one down the street, and this one is far much better, far much better. It's clean, first of all. And, and the access is, is uh, it's a little more difficult because you got to go inside a building, but that's okay. Um, yeah, but you'll you know, love it when it's raining out. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. And there's no dust and dirt floating through. So um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it's turned out to be a much nicer uh, situation. So one of the things we were also was, you know, instead of having six, can we knock the number down to uh, three? and have three retail units, and then we'd be able to allow those people more water usage because we're on a septic system there. And yeah. we have, you know, that would give more parking per unit, which would increase other opportunities. So can, may I ask a couple questions, Warren? Sure, go ahead, please. So are those units, can you, could you put two units together there? Put for three for together. You could you could you could bundle them all yeah, together and have one big yeah, store. Yeah, there's seven. Them. Our office is in the middle, so you yeah, could, right you dead have, center. Yeah, uh, you have uh, 5,400 on either side of our office. Right, right. So has it been marketed as a, as a larger space or only as 800 been, space? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. We just a, just a thought. Just a yeah, thought. Yeah. No, you know? we're in negotiations with someone for two units, and that's as big as anyone's wanted. Okay. So they were going to combine two units into it. Okay. Um, we've had nail salons come, but they're looking for more. They have more septic reserves because of the right. high water flow for nail salons and hairdressers and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you got to have a separate tank for them too because of the hair right. coloring and things like that. Right, and we're limited to about a hundred hundred gallons a day per retail unit. Yeah. Okay. So that that crosses out any you know hair salons or nail places, things like that, because We've had four or five of each come by. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I don't know. What's the rest of the board think? What do you guys think? Uh, any comments on this, Dave? I know it's. I see. I see both sides, and uh, and I I agree a little bit with Chris because I think it's just a tough year to judge the right. lack of success with knowing how Massachusetts and many in most states in the, in the country have shut things down and there hasn't, there just hasn't been anyone going out there gobbling up any retail space due to the environment, which has only just been opened up, you know, as of Saturday. So um, not, not that uh, there wasn't any activity. It's just that it, it seems like it was just opened up when we we're allowed to take some masks off. I don't know. It's just mm -hmm. tough. I agree with Chris that I'm not opposed to it, but I'd like to see them give it a little bit more of a shot uh, now that things are opening up. Jeremiah, any thoughts on it? Yeah, I'd concur with that, especially considering that once the change is made, there's no going back from that really, at least not easily. And um, it seems like the original intent of the of the approval still is relevant. So giving a little bit of time, I think is, is warranted here. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to hamstring them either. So I, that's why no. I thought it's a six month thing, because again, and to, to pick up where Dave kind of left off there is 
the fact that we were just allowed to take, you know, you weren't going to get a retail store of any kind in there, a retail situation where people had to come in face to face until they were comfortable with coming in without masks for the most part. So I, um, in other words, people would go to places they had to go to and wear a mask, but if they didn't have to go, they, they wouldn't go. So, so, um, so I think that's, uh, so I'm gonna ask everybody what they think about, uh, do we, should we do three months, should we do six months? You know, what's, uh, what's everybody else's? Chris, what do you think? Uh, six months is good to me. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if, you know, winter season would really impair the change of the fronts to storage. Um, I mean, they, they, you built that, that building was built pretty much through the winter, as I recall. Um, yeah. So, you know, ending it later on, I don't think it's, to me, would be an issue. Now, if, if he had someone coming in with a signed lease that was going to take up 50% of his water use and take up two of his units. Maybe I would say, Hey, you know, he could come in then and, and get somebody, you got somebody in there. He joins a couple units and then we have to release another one. Cause he doesn't have the, 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 uh, water, right. the, the water flow for it. Um, that, that would, that makes a difference to me. Um, yeah. because the, it shows, it shows a positive movement and I can't get people in there cause I don't have, I don't have, enough drainage for them, enough, enough water for them. So, you know, that would help push me sooner. Um, so that, that's, that's my opinion. I, okay. I want to be flexible and, and uh, understandable to him. I mean, he, the, the building is very nice that he built. Got to say that. Okay. All right, Jeremiah, what do you think? Three months, six months, is that six months a good time? Um, three months just seems too short. Um, and there's going to be some, you know, it's going to be a transition back to normalcy. It's not going to happen overnight. And so right. three months just seems kind of short. Uh, but, yeah. you know, six months seems appropriate. But I, but I agree right. with everything that Chris said about, you know, the context in three months that if, you know, we could come back in three months and say, I know we said six, but here's the current circumstances. We've got some different offers where we could divvy it up and right, right. the things Chris described. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dave? I agree with that too. And I think, again, leaving the door open for those circumstances where we could entertain some, some modifications um, in the interim of six months. Okay. So, so John, we put a lot of effort into trying to put together a bylaw and do some things to try to follow some of the direction we got from the state as far as mixed use and things like that. And, and we tried to put it into play uh, in, as best in the, in the project that you brought to us. But I think, as you can see, we're sensitive to the issue, but we really would like to give it a little more time. So um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I would like to do a, invite you back in the, in the six month time frame to let us know how you make it out. And again, as Chris said, if you have a, a situation that you would need to do some, some combination um, or, or So Walter are going to be there like, you know, 7.30. Oh, jeez. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Where will have done it to be? I don't know. 8 um, o'clock is when we're getting the field. So yeah. it won't be it won't be 85 degrees until 11. So I feel like, Danielle, that's going to move things along because it's going to get hot fast Saturday morning. Well, mm. yeah. Which I'll is... Little, uh, little, I'll bring one of my pop-ups. <laughs> both, um, um, correct me if I'm wrong. I just have a quick question, Chair Pierce, but both yes. warrant articles at the end, the zoning ones, Wheeler and Coviello are two thirds, right? Yep. Yes. All right. Well, yeah, so if people just remember what happened last meeting leaving. last year. People started yes. leaving. Yep. So. Well, that's what I was. I knew that's where you're going with that. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's. It gets to be 85 of those, degrees and everybody's leaving. But I think it's two thirds know? of those that are sitting down at the time you vote, right? Right, Correct. yeah. Right, doesn't matter how many people leave before, it's only if they decide to leave 
after the vote, and then you do that, whatever that reaffirmation thing is. Right. Uh, and, yeah. and it's yeah. not a special town meeting. It's an annual, so you don't have a quorum. Mm-hmm. If, if, we, if it was a special and you went below the quorum numbers, then it wouldn't count. Right. Just been around well, too yeah. long doing this stuff. <laughs> Perhaps the best, uh, Danielle, perhaps the best thing to do is to move this to our next Zoom meeting. Okay. That would probably be the, and then, and w- because two things, first of all, that means that Ryan will probably be there and he won't be stretching that day into some long drawn out day. Okay. So is everybody okay with that? Fine with me. Okay. Nine o'clock it okay. is. Yeah. Because yep. we really need to give, um, you know, we need to have everybody involved. Yep, absolutely. You can't you can't do that without with with one person but out. It's really it's really unfair, and it's and it's not even a matter of whether Ryan has any stock in it or anything. It's more a matter of you know that we didn't wait for him. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Absolutely. So, we've always we've done it in the past. We've always waited for our yeah, all of our uh, members to be there. It'll be at least a month before Barbara starts asking her, what are we, what are we doing, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. She's got to understand it. I mean, you know, she understands. I know, I know. She knows. Just, she knows. just keep her informed. That's all. So Yeah, that's all. All right. So we yeah, got to be there. I would be there earlier than 9 o'clock so you don't get caught in the line waiting to get in. That's all yeah. I have to say there. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I have, a, I have a real ID, which the thing doesn't like to read it won't read my real id oh it won't i gotta get one of those i was supposed to get it last year but oh geez what happened <laughs> yeah all right, well, then, that's our meeting for tonight um thank you all very much for coming and i guess we'll see you at the town meeting and and um hopefully everybody can make it oh i'm sorry one more quick announcement um the edc is having their event for yes. business on tuesday evening of next week it's um june 8th at 5 30 at the horseshoe and it's for yep. uh, north reading businesses and the cpc members are all invited and i will um forward you the invitation i thought i'd included you on an earlier mailing but i'll just i'll send it to you so don't send one to me i'll be there i will send one to you chris I'll all be right there. i'll sign up so you right. so far well, how many signups okay. have you? How many signups have you had so far? Um, I, I'm tracking them with the chamber, so I don't know exactly how many. And then we haven't counted all the board members yet. So, uh, where are we tracking? I, I think a dozen, right? Is that what, that what she was saying? Yeah, without counting all like the, the without counting the 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 regular like us. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I feel like again, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if we hit. You know, you you find another eight ten last minute. I, I I feel like no one RSVPs early ever. Yeah. Right. Personally, in business. So this. <laughs> so. Are you going to send out a reminder before the end of the week to people? So Lisa has actually been doing a lot of the inviting, and she just sent out a reminder on the chamber list today. But we were kind of brainstorming who else could maybe use a personal invitation. Um, you know, just. Reminder, but yeah, there have been a couple reminders that have gone out. Okay, great. Okay, all right. Well, hopefully, we'll see some of you there. I think I'm gonna try to go, I guess. So, yeah, I'll be there. Well, I'm gonna be there. Right. Lauren, I'll try to get somebody to buy some fireworks off you or a show or something, as long as they have a big yard. Yeah. I suggested <laughs> yeah, yeah. mine and I got told that I would, I suggested mine on an EDC call. And I was told, based on my acreage, I'm being conservation land that I probably would not get the permit. Um, so you know. we'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> so. I'll, give, I'll give you a call and talk to you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Danielle. Good night. Take care. Good night.